Hello everyone and welcome back to Technically Unsure, where I'm not really sure what I'm doing technically. Not sure. So today we are going to be taking a look at new mini PC. I just got sent this device. It's the Ace Magic Vista Mini V1. And I received the 16 gigabyte RAM and 512 gigabyte SSD basically. And this is on sale on Amazon for like 209 bucks. So for the price that comes with an N150, I know some of you are not really big fan of those N150s. It got four core, four thread right we reviewed a bunch of n150s on this channel some of you complained in the past about 150s that you know i will put 100 bucks more and get some a motherboard and stuff but this one is all in one so there's the user manual okay and yeah oh it's small this is the smallest n150 i've held in my hand mini pc size so basically the n150 you can run this as a you know for daily tasks business applications and very very you know light gaming connecting my trigger long updates delaying desktop access there is another tip here for faster setup avoid Wi-Fi or LAN initial just to get into the operating system you can you know not use internet but definitely install your updates 16 gigabyte RAM 512 Intel and 150 12 volt 2.5 amp yeah very low power too it looks really nice actually I'm changing my mind you can buy pay more and get some more powerful computer but I don't think it's gonna be this compact and I think this will have its own users you know there is enough IO as well to do certain things on this you see there's a only one gigabit Ethernet over here these are USB 2 though these are USB 3 so you can plug in one of those USB 3 to 2.5 gigabit Ethernet adapters you can kind of turn this into some sort of server as well you can run nginx proxy on this you can run multiple of those servers on this bad boy and it will not have any issues running it that's one type of use another type is using this for daily you know web surfing and responding to emails and using business applications yeah this would absolutely do it so very small very light in terms of io as i said two usb 2s a dc barrel jack and that dc it is 12 volt 2.5 amp right so 12 volt two usb 2s hdmi port display port gigabit ethernet two usb 3s and audio for uh, you know headphones so yeah that's also the power button there's nothing else so the one thing i just want to see is inside of it which is under these rubber feet i can't even see the screw oh yeah it's all the way in so we are going to take a look at it but before that i just want to turn it on first and do some benchmarking see some you know performance numbers by the way in the box they give you an hdmi cable as well as this amount and the screws it's so light you can attach it behind your monitor and use it this is the first one i think i see this size it's very small okay so that being said give me a couple of minutes let me set this up and take it for a spin and see how it does in various applications i will be right back actually before turning it on as i have my own nvme ssd and i am going to run that it does have a lot of software i just opened it up to show you guys you know it comes with a Rayson m.2 2280 sata and uh, share tronic ram ddr4 16 gigabyte ram so i'm not touching the ram but i'm going to replace the nvme ssd and opening it up was easy honestly nothing special i just take off some screws and yeah there it is it came off so the cooler is attached and the wi-fi antenna is connected to the case that's pretty much it and this is the cooler for the cpu i'm hoping it is enough we are going to check we are going to check the thermals and everything okay just wanted to show you the inside is this it's very small nothing special all right so i'm gonna replace the dmm ssd and uh, we're gonna try it i will be right back okay so i have a very very fascinating behavior to report right Right off the bat so let me show you why plug the cable turn it on and look what happens there we go it comes back to BIOS. so first of all you can see the bias and default string bias serial number and all that stuff and you can see the memory is 22666 megahertz there is cpu configuration not much really just enabling virtualization power and performance some c states are here for you to play with here are some more and trusted computing is this is what you see and you know it's there and the gigabit ethernet the details are there 
on the memory configuration you can play around and change the speeds here okay and that's it so security secure boot is there everything else that's it right so no matter what i do it doesn't detect my samsung 990 pro so i tried this one that i used in many many videos i tried the windows one in many many videos as same ssd doesn't work but i put their own ssd and it works okay so we are booted and i think i get it they are using m.2 sata key so this one needs that m.2 sata type ssd you know so your regular usual nvme ssds like this not going to work with that you see you will need the ones like this m.2 sata ssd the ones that have like three connectors although the slot looks exactly the same but it's different this is m.2 sata ssd okay keep that in mind so your regular ones won't work also another thing that i just noticed although the case is open that thing is running hot okay so the sd heatsink is hot okay so when we are idle in windows that's like six watt that being said i'm gonna put it together and actually start manually installing a bunch of tools that I already have right there on the other SSD but I can't use it so yeah give me a couple of minutes let me set this up I will be right back okay we are back and let me show you a couple of things so first of all this is the crystal disk report and as you remember it is not using one of those NVMe SSD headers it's actually m.2 SATA header so it's not really that fast and while the screen popped open by itself I just want to show you also you can play some light games although this one is you know recently released and we are getting like 8 9 fps but you get the point it's a little bit slow but you can kind of play same thing goes with prince of persia i tried that one as well it's also recently released that one is you know we are getting at least 12 13 fps on that one so here is the 3d mark score as you can see here and 3d mark score is uh, 1230 it's okay and seems like you guys really like the cpu z so so here is the cpu z score 1270 and you guys also like me when i walk through these options in the cpu z so here you go okay so hopefully you got it all and i also submitted it for comparison as you can see we are between i5 3470s and i5 2500 so you know what it's identical so i5 2500 is our score so it's comparable to an i5 2500 and you can see more information over here and that url is there you can always come back to this so yeah it's an okay and acceptable uh, score and it's it's doing great for that cpu so if we go here and load up some game i just want to show you one thing so yeah here you go as you can see this one now it's getting 10 fps yeah i used to see 12 13 okay now it's back at 12 you see so while the game is running let me also show you some temperatures info so we are at by the way 25 watts is like the cap when i was doing benchmarks the highest number i saw was 25 so we are using all the cpu and and as you can see we are here these are the temperatures in here and here are the temperatures for the here you go intel Core. Yeah, right here sorry i wasn't seeing that here so here you can see the temperatures for the processor okay and while i'm running it always stays around you know 60 ish and if you go back to it you can see it's still 63 it was the highest it ever recorded and we are getting 10 11 fps kind of playable yeah it is what it is okay if you want to run on emulation games absolutely this would crush it and remember by the way i have to show you that the display we are at 4k resolution so all those games that i was running it was the 4k resolution and the computer is running at 4k resolution and yeah i got some scores so if you want to use this tiny small computer for like daily tasks business stuff business applications word office excel and maybe even some photoshop you know some small other applications this is fine it will do a great job and and you can see when windows is doing nothing it's like nine watts when i was doing benchmark it went up to 25 watts very quiet very small and very low power consuming device for 209 bucks acceptable but i know you guys are power users so this is not going to cut it well, what we are going to do is i am going to grab an ubuntu image and we are going to boot into ubuntu 
All right, so we are booted into Ubuntu, and if I run a new fetch, you will see it's Ubuntu 24. It's been up for 15 minutes, and those are the information, and 150, 3.6 gigahertz, Intel graphics, and all that good stuff. So, that being said, let me run a real quick stress ng test. As you can see, the power consumption goes up to 21. It went up to 25, came back 22 right now. There you go. And let's see what score we got. Okay, so we got 107,000 ops and 910 per second. So it is 107,000. It's obviously a very good number. It's not a good comparison to compare it to Raspberry Pi 5, but Raspberry Pi 5, you're getting 876 and 900 ish in this very same test. Okay, so it's a very powerful CPU, as you can see, and as you saw it in the Windows benchmarks as well let's do a quick iperf3 as well and yes see there you have it it's a truly gigabit ethernet connection and that one works fine as well and one of the things that i know you guys are just waiting for me to do it is olama and obviously these days everyone is going crazy for deep seek which i understand i was talking about deep seek 3 in one of my very earlier videos before the r1 came out and everybody lost their mind but yeah it's a powerful model yeah so i had a small typo deep seek r1b okay and i want to do a verbose and pay attention to the power consumption when i enter some prompt so this one is more in the coding so i'm not going to ask the usual question so let me ask write a very small sample i guess recursive Okay, so I ask a question, write a very small sample recursive Fibonacci sequence generator in Python. You can see the speed. All right, let's run the Olama R17B. Let's ask a simple question. Let's see how it does. And as you can see, the power consumption goes up to 23 watts, 23, 24 watts. Okay, so as you can see, we are getting eval rate of 1.88 tokens per second. And yeah, here are the stats. So it was slow, but you know, for a 200 bucks machine and 22 watts power consumption, I think that was fair. And the other models, I guess maybe like the Llama 3.1 latest, you can try that. Okay, now I'm going to ask the same question from Llama 3.1 latest version. And as you can see, again, the power consumption almost very identical. Okay, there you go. Okay, so this one, as you can see, was faster a little bit, 1.86. And then overall time, total duration, this came to the correct conclusion, 57 seconds. That one took 3 minutes and 57 seconds. Yeah, that's DeepSeek. That's just DeepSeek R1. It thinks a lot and the reasoning is on your side and it takes a long time. And this one, it's a little bit faster. But yeah, anyway, I just wanted to show you a couple of Olama and LLM model performance on this machine and uh, yeah that's about it honestly i tested everything as i can it's uh, some heat dissipation is very nice from the both sides so i didn't find any issue to be honest everything worked fine you saw the performance you saw the scores so the only thing that i honestly didn't like was the fact that it is using those sata m.2 so you need to have m.2 sata drives and not like the nvme ssd ones right Right. Other than that, I think it's a fair deal for 200 bucks. That's the performance you're getting. I hope I showed everything in terms of benchmarks. So yeah, thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions down below. If you want me to do other type of benchmarks in future videos, remember most of these tests that I'm doing, it's a half of them at least is coming from you guys, what you guys want to see. So keep telling me what you guys want to see in these benchmarks. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.